of expression. Police organizations and conservative groups decried the track as encouraging murder of police officers and encouraged a boycott of Warner Brothers Records, Ice T's label, and of the parent company, the giant Time Warner conglomerate, for making a profit off the track. Eventually, the record was pulled, however, by Ice T himself. Rather than draw economic arguments into the discussion, he offered to hand out copies of the tune free at concerts and remove it from the album in the marketplace. I ain't doing it for the money. Now, once we eliminate the issue that they're saying that this is for money, they still got to deal with the question, why did I write this record? Evil. Fight the real enemy. Irish singer Sinead O'Connor raised another storm on a Saturday night live when she tore up a picture of the Pope in a protest that surprised many and confused others. In terms of expression, here's a woman who's very brave and says what she wants. Uh, is often very stupid, by the way, in how she does it. But uh, I don't think she should be stopped. That sentiment was not shared by the audience at the 30th anniversary concert for Bob Dylan. When O'Connor took the stage, she was forced off by a jeering crowd, a jarring image at a tribute to one of the most outspoken performers in rock and roll history. The audience is soundly behind another outspoken and controversial figure this year, though, Howard Stern. His shock jock radio show is now top rated in several major cities, Los Angeles and New York included, but the Federal Communications Commission is levying fines against stations that carry his program, fines that could total just under $1 million. I think the government targeted me, and they said, well, you know, there's so, you know, there's so many hungry people in the streets, there's so many people killing one another in the streets, the economy's in a rut. What can we do so we don't look ineffectual? We'll go after Howard Stern's radio show, yeah. where he might mention the word masturbation once in a while, right. or mention the word penis once in a while. Protest greeted the release of the year's most controversial movie, Basic Instinct, a murder mystery that generated considerable steam on the screen and even more heat in the street. Murder suspects in the film were bisexual women, which led gay and lesbian activists to react angrily, often at Hollywood gatherings. Don't forget to mention that Hollywood homophobia is multi-million dollar big business. The film's principles denied any anti-gay bias. I just don't feel in this particular film, uh, being singled out, uh, that it's justified. I didn't feel uh, that that picture uh, should have produced the kind of conflict that it did. Basic Instinct also had its problems with the film ratings board. The filmmakers had to make under a minute's worth of trims to avoid an NC-17 rating and win the less financially restrictive R rating instead. At year's end, director Louis Maul made cuts in his film Damage rather than bear an NC-17. Other filmmakers chose to accept that rating and the resulting smaller financial return rather than re-edit their films. But even when the decision to stand up for freedom of expression is difficult, artists will probably continue to make it and find themselves at odds with the mainstream. If you told an artist he wasn't allowed to produce a nude, uh, you know, then we wouldn't have uh, Michelangelo's David, uh, you know, we wouldn't have a lot of painting, uh, photography. Uh, any of the arts. You know, art is about self-expression. 1993 will bring a new political environment to the United States. Whether it will bring a freer environment for expression as well remains to be seen. Dennis Michael, CNN Entertainment News, Hollywood. When we come back after a short break, a private couple's very public scandal. And later, CNN senior entertainment correspondent Bill Tush looks back at 1992's hits and misses as the entertainment year in review continues. The custody battle between Woody Allen and Mia Farrow emerged as the celebrity scandal of the year. CNN's Mark Shearer has that story. The slow news days of August were shattered suddenly by what became the biggest showbiz scandal of 1992. And it hit full stride with an unprecedented news conference called by the normally reclusive director, Woody Allen. And the one thing I have been guilty of is falling in love with Miss Farrow's adult daughter at the end of our years together and Alan was responding to reports he was dating one of the adopted daughters of his longtime companion actress Mia Farrow. Alan acknowledged his affair with college student Suni Previn which came to light through the discovery of nude photos of the young woman in Woody's apartment. 
As the details emerged of the disintegration of his 12-year relationship with Farrell and a custody battle over their three adopted children took shape, a shocking charge of child molestation arose. At the Farrell country home in Connecticut, it was alleged, Allen sexually abused seven-year-old Dylan, Farrow and Allen's adopted daughter. This, my lawyers tell me, is a currently popular, though heinous card played in all too many of child custody fights. The allegation of sexual misconduct made to Connecticut had occurred before he brought his custody suit. His custody suit mm. is a card he's playing to deflect attention away from the investigation of his own misconduct. Although Mia wasn't talking on camera, she saw to it that members of the Farrow Allen extended family, comprised of 11 natural and adopted children, became available to news media, scrambling for on-the-record comment from insiders. Disgusted at him. I'm angry at him. Um, I hope that he doesn't win this battle. Woody's defenders spoke up too. Woody is not a child molester. Never was. Never. Not he isn't, and he never will be. SUNY Previn, attending summer college classes, kept silent. In late August, Allen and Farrow sent their teams of lawyers before a New York State Supreme Court judge to argue over visitation rights during the expected custody struggle. That evening, Woody and Mia themselves met with the judge behind closed doors and voluntarily agreed to make no further statements to the press or anyone else. This is total insanity. You'll be back together in one She's week. Gonna... In September, TriStar Pictures moved up the release date of Alan's new film, Husbands and Wives, with speculation running high that the previous month's worth of free publicity would help at the box office. Let's see. And something is happening Come around on, this movie, see. and there's, there's no denying it, and there's no blinking it. He might just as well say, yeah, here it is. Go see it. Um, make what you will of it. I think it's terrific. I think he's brilliant. I liked it. I thought it was worthwhile seeing. I think it's a fascinating examination. I think it's his best film. It's real life. It's about relationships, and you put it together. But outside of New York and Los Angeles, apparently, interest in husbands and wives turned out to be greatly overestimated. Despite critical acclaim, the film did poorly at the box office. Meanwhile, Woody and Mia did poorly at keeping their promise to curtail using the media to tell their sides of the story. In the November Vanity Fair, friends of Mia Farrow filled an article with details of Alan's alleged fondling of his adopted daughter. Alan countered by sitting down for an interview with 60 Minutes. As Alan began work on his next film, having recast Mia Farrow's role with his one-time companion Diane Keaton, the Connecticut sex abuse investigation continued and the child custody case slowly moved forward in the courts. The showbiz scandal of the year seemed likely to be a contender for similar honors next year. Mark Shearer, CNN Entertainment News, New York. Coming up next, 1992's winners and losers. And later, the year's breakthrough performers as we continue our special look at the entertainment year in review. Mamma mia, mamma mia, mamma mia, let me go. Be as a devil put aside for me, for me. Wire, okay? Help! Help! What? A minute ago you said, Isn't this amazing? It's my favorite part because you'll see. Who are you? Who's the man behind the bed? Maybe you can help me find the woman. band that managed to really kind of redefine themselves this year is U2. They really found a way to combine the best of what they do and the best of what's happening out there. Winners rose to the occasion. Losers hope for better luck next year. Senior entertainment correspondent Bill Tush looks back at the hits and misses of 92. We're not worthy! We're not worthy! Could a seven-minute TV sketch be turned into a full-length movie and be one of the top grossing films of 1992? No way! Wait! That's right, Wayne's World, made on a shoestring budget to date, has grossed more than $120 million. So did Sister Act, Lethal Weapon 3, 
And it looks like Home Alone 2 is well on.